his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desire to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and were ejaculated. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straight away, and he commanded to give her meat. 56 and last. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done.
Christ, visiting friends with the children. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I can greet you in this name tonight. It's because one day, when I wasn't thinking of him, he thought of me. And he came down so low. And he picked me up. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I'm giving God thanks tonight. Praise the Lord Jesus. The time is all saying, what shall I render unto the Lord? For all his benefits towards me. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Lord has been good to us. Praise the Lord Jesus. He woke us up this morning. Praise God. He closed us in our right hand. And we have a right tonight to give him thanks. We have a right tonight to worship him. The sons that cry out and shout. Lord, we have it unto Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel.
flesh and blood, we're fighting against principalities, powers, darkness, but in order to be in the position to face these forces, we first got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Secondly, Atias Mekalasana. We've got to be connected with him. And then you start to put on the arm. Hallelujah. See, this armor is not visual for the natural eyes to see. This is why he says, I will lead you. I will guide you. Because when these forces come up against you, the armor of righteousness shall protect you. But he said, when it's time for you to draw the sword of truth,
things that his morning break forth. When the Lord said to Elijah that go now to Jericho because it is no time for you to die. Now the scripture said that when they left from Gilgal, Oh God, when they left from Gilgal, then they were on their way and the sons of the prophet, because it's important for us to realize that in those days they had different schools for the prophets. One such school was found in Gilgal. Now when they were leaving from Gilgal, I started to think about the word Gilgal and it means a circumcision. Now when we are at Gilgal and we're going through our circumcisions, it's not really an easy process. It is not something that is easy for a man to be circumcised. Because when we are circumcised, it brings us much pain. But if it is proven by, by medical, medical personnel or people that study medicine, that when a man is circumcised, it is easier for him to impregnate a woman. Now I started to think about it and I'm saying, in order for God to impregnate us with purpose, then our hearts have to be circumcised. But when he is ripping my heart and peeling away the foreskin, then it is not an easy process. But when the foreskin is removed, then it is easy for him to impregnate me with his purpose. But the sons of the prophet, they came out and they said, do you know that your master is going to be taken away from you today? Now the man did not engage in a conversation, but he said, hold your peace. Now it is important for us to hold our peace.
Do you know Amen. that your master will be taken away from you? And he did not stop to say, how do you know? But he said, hold your peace. And they left from Bethel and they moved on to Jericho. No, they went somewhere else, but then they moved on to Jericho. Now when they were at Jericho, the scripture said that Elisha served Elijah for double, for six years. Now if we go back to Deuteronomy, we realize that the scripture said that if a servant had served a master double, then you send him off with a good portion. You send him off with a double portion. Now this man had to serve in order to get the blessing. He could not just get the blessing without serving. Now when they went to Jericho, and Elijah said to him, what do you want from me? He said that a double portion Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. 
because why the word of God dwell in my heart. And that's why that's what my prayer is. Because you know, I was reading this morning, I was reading this morning, and I said to myself that before I worship God, before I come to God to worship, I must make sure that I'm purified and sanctified. The Bible says that God allowed Ahasuerus to say, bring Vashti before him. And then God made it so happen that I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying God told her to do this. God was saying, is it is it God, right? God, God allowed it for her to disobey the king's commandment. And by doing so, she basically put herself on the throne and brought it and God allowed to bring Esther. But what I'm trying to say, the Bible says that before when they chose the fair virgins, the Bible said they had to go through a series of purification. Six months with olive oil and six months with everything. But anyway, 12 months all, 12 months all together. And I'm saying that if they had to present themselves to a natural king and had to go on 12 months purification to, to meet the natural king, how much more the Almighty God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Gods. And I'm saying to myself, I said, I must be purified. Whenever I go to, whenever I go to the house of God, when I worship, I must be purified because why? 12 months to see the natural king, they had to purify themselves. Much more coming to the house of God to worship that mighty God. And I'm saying to all of us tonight, it's, it's a reality. And God accepts true worshipers. God accepts true worshipers. And as I said, it's not good, it's not good that I tell you this and I don't, but I'm telling you for myself as well that God only accepts me when my worship is in spirit and in truth. Because the Bible said, He seeketh such worshipers to worship Him. And I'm saying to all of us tonight, let's take heed to the Word of God. Let's, let's hold fast to the Word of God. The Bible says in, in Deuteronomy, after when they joined to build more and God had wiped out quite a lot of the children of Israel, the Bible, Moses says to some of them, He said, All of you are here because you cleave to the Lord. And when you, true, when you stay true to the Almighty God, God will keep us, God will shield us, God will protect us because we know in whom we believe and we are persuaded that He's able to keep that which we have committed unto Him against that day. Because, you see, this is not the end of You see, the, the dangerous bit is to hear the part, I know you. You see, the dangerous thing is come to church, hear the word of God, and I don't change. That's the dangerous part. Because the Bible said that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And for not knowing who God is and understanding who God is, it's more dangerous to come to church and worship a God who we worship him. And this is why when God was punishing Israel, he said, and then they shall know that I am the Lord. Because why? The worship, they knew, they knew not who they worship him. And I'm saying, let us know who the Almighty God is. Even, even when in the scripture read today, in Luke 8, the Bible said, they said, what manner of man is this? They were with the Almighty God. They were with Christ, but they didn't know who he was. Let us understand. You see, this is why the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor. And I have been able, so I will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Because God expects us to learn of him. Understand who he is. He said that those that come into God must believe that he is God and that he's our reward of, of them that diligently seek him. So the Bible says that when we come to God, we must learn of the Almighty God. Not just learn how God loves me, but learn how God can destroy me. Because the Bible said it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. He said, for our God is a consuming fire. So the Bible said that every two sons offer sanctuary to God. God was not concerned with the fact that the father was a priest. But because they knew what was wrong, they offered to God strange fire. And right in the heart of the congregation, right in the heart of the worship, God destroyed them. Because it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. It's so not good I know who God is and don't understand that He's a fearful, and dreadful God. You know, I, I was saying to myself this morning that the rightful people who should be the judges and the lawyers are the apostles of the church. And I tell you why. The Bible says that there was an Egyptian in the camp that was swearing. And they told Moses. Moses says, Hallelujah! Put, him, put him in a ward until the mind of the Lord be revealed. And I'm saying to say that, 
So when God spoke to Moses, they drug him away from the, from the congregation and stoned him. What I'm saying is, God is the true witness. If God says you are a liar, you are a liar. If God curses you, God curses you. If God bless you, God bless you. There's no greater witness than the Almighty God. And I'm saying that when you come to the church of the living God, you must understand that God is a fearful and a dreadful God. Because He's a rewarder of them that they shall seek Him. Thank you. 